The final thing I want to talk to you about is variance estimation. As you recall from the lecture on asymptotics, we, sh we, uh, we, we looked at this theorem on asymptotic normality that said that under suitable assumptions, the variance, uh, the estimator becomes asymptotically normal with this asymptotic variance matrix, where the B, that's the expectation of the outer product of the scores, and the A matrix is the expectation of the Hessian. So what does that work like in MATLAB? To do this, I've created a class called estimation that will do this for us. Um, whoops. All right, let's look at the estimation class. Once again, we start by folding all of the code so that we can look at it nicely and slowly. Okay, and once again, there are no properties here. Here are the methods. It has this function called estimate m, which is a function for estimating m estimators. <clears throat> and then it has a bunch of functions to help at that. It's a centered gradient, which does a numerical gradient. There's a numerical Hessian, something to print some results. You can plot data and prediction and compute root mean square error. So these are all helping functions, and this is the only one that I'm going to tell you a little bit about what goes on. Okay, a lot of stuff here. First off, you can see the inputs for the function. It takes Q, which is supposed to be a handle to the criterion function that returns a vector. So Q, in order to call this, needs to be a handle. So remember that we create handles like this. Say it's going to be a function of theta, and it could be nls.criterion of y, x, theta, if we have y and x in memory as data, which we do right now. There we go. Sorry, we don't do that right now. Let's create y and x. NLS.simulate dataset. Uh, let's do a thousand observations and an intercept of one and a slope parameter of three. There we go. Now we can uh, create Q and now Q will actually work if we try to evaluate it somewhere. Let's get some thetas into memory starting values and um, just start with zeros and let's see if q works it does and it returns a vector so that's the first input to estimate m the second input is starting values so that's the theta naught that we have in memory now the zeros then n the number of observations will return to why that's a good idea options and the covariance type. So we can use different types of covariance matrix estimator. And the options are options for f min onc if we want to give it any specific options. So the first thing it does if it is that it says that if, if we have fewer than five arguments in, so this is the number of arguments, we can actually call this function with fewer arguments than five. If it doesn't give the fifth argument the covariance type, it's going to set it to a default value of sandwich using the sandwich estimator. And the sandwich estimator is just this guy, A inverse B, A inverse. Because it turns out, as we will talk about on Tuesday, that there are actually uh, alternative versions of this if something called the information matrix equality holds. Good. Then it sets up the Q function in the same way as I just did before, the sum of little q so that's exactly what we did before. So this one will return a number and it calls fminunc, the optimizer, with this function. And it outputs the estimates, theta hat, and a bunch of other things. The most important one being the Hessian. Because then it turns out that we're ready to calculate A and B actually. A will just be the Hessian. So if Menonc gives us the Hessian as one of the outputs, if Menonc also gives us grad. But as it turns out, grad has nothing to do with this one. Okay, this is the expectation of the outer product of the scores, but that's not equal to the outer product of the scores of the expectation. 
Why is that? To see that, we can actually step into the function here. If we enter some, a statement called keyboard, what it will do is that once the function runs, it will stop here. Let's try and first run the function to see what happens. Remember, it's in the class called estimation, so we type estimation dot estimate underscore m of our q function theta naught the n which let's see what n was thousand um, options we're gonna have to create some options to give it we'll just go with the default options which is we want it to use fmin unc and we won't set any other options actually let's set one option we want to see at each iteration what happens there we go we have our option options struct here let me clear the window okay so estimation dot estimate m of q theta naught n is equal to a thousand give it this option thing and we want the sandwich variance estimator there we go we can see that it calls fmin unc gives this default warning gradients must be provided for the trust region algorithm using quasi newton instead if we want to avoid that we can actually go ahead uh, when we call the options here we can tell it that we want it uh, as algorithm to use quasi newton then if we call estimation dot estimate m once again with these options we're not going to get that one here you can see what happens it says local minimum found good so we have flat gradients it's the only acceptable convergence criterion computing finite difference hessian that's because we asked for the hessian if my uncle will do the hessian using finite differences and then it does all of these things and finally it prints the results and that's what we see here we have theta and we have standard errors and t-values but let's see what actually happens in here so if we enter keyboard here and we run the code again it will stop when it gets to here notice the little green arrow now we are inside the function and we can see what the function sees at this point let me clear the output window so before I had a y and x and all of that in memory. Now, actually, in my workspace down here, I don't have y and x, but instead I can see str cove type, which is sandwich and exit flag fl and grad, all of these things that came out of fmin unc. So I see what the function sees at this step, and using uh, the editor and clicking step, I can take one more step and I get to this point here. Now it's going to create a s. So let's have it do that. So if I click, click S now, nothing is in memory. Take another step. And now it has S. So this estimation.centered grad has computed the gradients and you can see that they are N by K and K is two. So now it can compute the outer product of the scores and divide them by N. So that's the average outer product of the scores because s prime times s is just 4 by 4 so divided by n then it's the average outer product of the scores and now let's look at what grad looks like grad looks like this so if we take the outer product of grad with itself oops that was the inner product outer product then you can see this is a tiny matrix, it's 10, time, 10 to the minus 7 times some numbers, whereas the average outer product of, uh, of the, the scores, or the outer product of the scores was 10 to plus 3. So what happens here? The reason is that we take the average outer product um, takes, will have this mu number multiplied by itself, so that's squaring it. So all these things will when we add them up will be positive and then it becomes a big number whereas the gradient here is just this guy which is already small we know the gradient is supposed to be small because the optimizer is supposed to have converged 
All right. So if if you find this a bit confusing, then uh, go to the uh, think about matrix algebra. Maybe actually what you can do is you can create a, a matrix of random 10 by 2 like this and then go x dot times x this is the um, this will uh, whoops capital X this is the same thing right this one goes on the side and multiply it with itself um, and we get some uh, some numbers coming out of this so work with the algebra if it confuses you okay let's return to the function so we got to this point let's take a further step here now it's computed B the average out of product of the scores A is not yet computed so let's take another step and now we have A in memory so we now have A and B these two matrices and we're ready to compute uh, the covariance matrix using the sandwich formula so what this does here is the switch over it takes SGR cove type and then depending on what the value of that one is it executes each of these in this case it's each puts a sandwich so it's going to go in here let's see that take a step and another step and we're in here now it computes the sandwich formula and jumps out so now we have co the covariance matrix and we get the standard areas as the square root of the diagonal elements of the covariance matrix SE underscore theta hat. There we go. These are the standard errors, and we can relate them to a theta hat. And we get t values by element wise division like this theta hat divided by SE theta hat. So the t values are huge. We're pretty sure these parameters are not equal to zero, they're bigger than 2.06 or 1.96, I guess. Good. That concludes uh, this talk on the uh, estimation. So the important part here is the uh, the sandwich formula, and this is a matrix notation, uh, or rather, this is a convenient way of telling MATLAB how to do this inversion. Uh, so if we were to go and create a new variable, cov two, which is one over n times a to the minus first times b times a to the minus first. This is cove 2 and this was our original cove. So we can see it gives the same number. It's a smart way of making this computation where it doesn't actually have to do the full inverse here, which is a very complicated operation. It can do a neat trick to get at this number instead. Um, but I won't go into details with that here. That concludes this talk on the estimation class. Some of the remaining functions we're going to be using uh, in the lecture, uh, but they're just convenient uh, plotting tools. For example, um, oh, I need to show you how to get out. Well, now we're, we're still in the, uh, we still have the green arrow in here. If you want to get out of it, click editor and quit debugging. And remember to remove the keyboard statement here. Yeah, so I just wanted to show you the uh, plot uh, data and prediction. Uh, recall that we had the plot of uh, the second element of x against y, which looked like this. Now we can plot the prediction together with it using estimation dot, which tells my lab, look in the estimation class for a function. Oops for a function called plot data and prediction versus x2 give it y x model that's nls and theta so it passes a pointer to the model called nls oops and uh, theta hat sorry we don't have theta hat let's get theta hat estimated Q theta naught thousand ops. There we go. Now we have theta hat in memory. 
and we can call this guy and there we go it plots the prediction together with the data that concludes this session